mean? Um, so the thing to note is that the way scientists are looking at this data, they're going, okay, is it just a really, really bad coincidence? You know, this person was going to get a bad health effect at some point and they just happened to get a vaccine. Is it just, is it, was it just a bad coincidence, um, an unfortunate coincidence? Or was it due to um, an actual effect? So there's a very, very rare allergic effect that can sometimes occur from vaccinations. And just to note that this is the most common of the super rare and super bad uh, vaccine effects. Um, it's called anaphylaxis. And they did a three year review at one point and they found that basically every, it only occurs about once every 1 million doses, super rare. This is the equivalent of getting struck by lightning two or three times in a single year. Um, so very rare. Um, the recent variants, I'm sure you've been hearing on the news about how a few of them have been starting to get more contagious. Now, it's natural that viruses change over time. These changes can sometimes lead to type, new types of strains that act differently. And there's three of them. Um, so the UK, Brazil, and South African versions. The are all believed to be more contagious and all have been found in the US uh, to date. The UK one in particular, there's over 500 cases in the US of the UK variant. So health experts are monitoring the situation closely. And are the vaccines effective against these variants? So um, the way these mutations work, it would be, the, the chances are low that a virus can mutate in such a way that it would completely stop a vaccine from working. Like it would have to get, you know, many, many, many types of mutations. Um, so scientific, uh, the scientific community feels that it's unlikely it'll completely stop. At the same time, they're making plans, you know, like the South African version has been shown to reduce some of the effectiveness of some vaccines um, that's still being tested right now. The vaccines work, but work slightly less well. Um, they, uh, but if we do need to update the formula, Pfizer and Moderna in particular can do it quite quickly. Um, they can update within about six weeks. And there's also testing and booster shots. Do I have to pay for the vaccine? So the answer is no on this. Uh, the government is providing it without cost, but you should be aware that there are some administration fees that could be given, um, and this will be covered by your insurance. And if you're uninsured, there's a government fund that we're linking to that you can check out. Um, when will it be available for um, the, the general public? So supplies are currently limited, but it'll increase over time. Uh, we expect at some point later in the year uh, to be available for adults. So children, it may not be available for a little bit more time until more research is done. And the, pri the groups that are being prioritized right now are healthcare workers, nursing home and staff and residents, uh, frontline and essential workers, and people over 75. Um, who's making the decisions about who's getting the vaccine? So a group of scientists that are advising the CDC are trying to ask the uh, people to consider science, ethics, and, and the implementation of the vaccine rollout. And, but ultimately it's state and local leaders that'll be prior, that have the, the final say as who gets the vaccine and when. Where do you need to go it's, uh, to get the vaccine? You know, doctors, offices, retail, pharmacies, <clears throat> hospitals, and federal qualified health centers. But check your local government websites for more information. And I'll pass it over to Casey. Yeah, so since um, a majority of these decisions are being made at such a local level, we did want to point out where you can find this information um, on the Ohio Department of Health website. So the Department of Health does have a page that focuses specifically on the COVID-19 vaccine program. And if you follow that link, it will take you to a page where you can find more information about um, not only the different phases of the vaccine um, and when they're expecting those to happen, but also who will be in each of those phases. Um, okay, so are there risks associated with getting a vaccine? So the COVID-19 vaccines, it's similar to what you might get from a flu vaccine. Um, so this, so some of the common ones are listed here. Um, they usually go away within a few hours or a few days. Uh, so these symptoms are actually a good sign. It's showing that your body is, is getting the, the tools it needs to fight this virus in the future. Your immunity is building up. So it's actually a good sign to get some of these side effects. Um, not getting a vaccine. Um, so unfortunately, you and your loved ones may contract COVID-19 if you don't get a vaccine, and your body may not be able to fight it off. You may, unfortunately, anyone's at risk of getting the more severe symptoms. And, you know, 
you don't want to be that unlucky person, right? So here are some of the examples of the symptoms. And, you know, some of the, the worst ones are like long-term symptoms that can last weeks or months, uh, hospitalization, you know, be on a ventilator, unable to work. And, you know, death is one of the symptoms. Uh, more trusted sources of information, yes. So this is actually where we got most of our information from was from these uh, sites. Um, we'll just point out the Ohio Department of Public Health is also on here. Uh, should you get vaccinated even if you don't have risk factors? So um, the, oh, this is uh, Casey's slides, I'll let her present. Uh, yeah, so I will admit, I am one of those people who in the beginning was thinking, oh, well, I don't have risk factors, so I don't have to worry about COVID-19. Um, but the truth is that the more people who get vaccinated, the more likely it is that we'll be able to slow the spread of the virus and potentially put an end to the pandemic. Um, because the vaccine not only protects you, but also those who are around you who might be more vulnerable. Maybe they're older or they have um, a pre-existing condition. Uh, so just to kind of illustrate this, we created a graphic. So if you imagine that this is a community with absolutely no immunity, um, the pink dot represents COVID and it can spread pretty easily um, without anything getting in its way. But if you compare that to a community with about 45% immunity, um, and immunity here is represented by the gray dots, um, COVID can still spread, but it doesn't quite get as far. And then in a community with about 90% immunity, um, COVID will stay relatively contained. It will spread, but it very quickly hits a wall of vaccinated people. So it, it may just stay within a, a family or a group of friends. And so we already kind of illustrated this, but it seems like in order to put an end to the pandemic and stop the spread of the virus, we'll need about 70 to 90% of the population to have immunity. And this can be acquired either by getting COVID-19 um, or by getting vaccinated. Um, and when we, we look at the risks of getting COVID-19 versus getting vaccinated, it is a much safer option to get vaccinated rather than risk the severe symptoms of coming down with the disease. Uh, it's also important to note that you will still need to social distance and wear a mask even once you've gotten the vaccine. And this is because um, there's a lot more research that needs to be done about if you can still spread the disease to someone else, even if you're vaccinated. So you might have some of the virus on your hands or on your face or in your nose or something, um, and you could carry it to someone else even though you're not infected. Um, so there's some preliminary evidence that shows that we might be able to stop the spread by being vaccinated um, or the spread in this way, but there's still more research that needs to be done. And because there has been so much talk about the, the new COVID-19 variants and how um, much more contagious they can be, um, we wanted to emphasize that masks are still protective against the new variants, but a mask is only as good as its fit and its filtration. So be sure to have a mask that has ideally three layers of a tightly woven fabric, and it should fit tightly to your face. Um, so no gaps around your nose, your cheeks, or under your chin. All right, thanks, Casey. Um, so another question that we wanted to address was, what if you've already had COVID-19? So you are eligible to get the vaccine, but um, one major caveat is if you do actively have the illness, don't get the vaccine. You know, you know, take some time at home or at a hospital, recover properly before um, you know you think about uh, anything else. And the uh, but if it's been some time and you want to get vaccinated, you can. The information in the Pfizer Moderna studies are showing that it's very safe. It's as safe as any other group. However, less firm conclusions can be drawn about how protective this vaccine is against future infections for this group. So just keep that in mind. Oh, and uh, of course, please talk to your doctor about this um, if, you've, uh, if you want more information on this. Um, so just a, a wrap up of what are the things you should think about when trying to decide whether you should get the vaccine? So what is your risk of getting the vaccine? You know, Are you at risk of severe symptoms? Are you in contact with a lot of people? Can you work from home? 
And what is your risk of spreading the disease? The last thing you want to do is accidentally spread it to your family and loved ones, uh, especially if they happen to get severe symptoms. Um, so how many people do you come in contact every day? Can you spread it to your neighbors or essential workers? And as we mentioned, the, the vaccines have been tested for safety and efficacy. Uh, for Pfizer and Moderna, they're effective in 95% of the time. Um, few side effects, they've been tested in a large number of people of different age groups, ethnic groups. Um, uh, health conditions. And so they're available to, to you without charge at a nearby facility. The other thing to note is to end the pandemic, we unfortunately do need a large percentage of people to get vaccinated. And that's our presentation. Thank you.